This is the threading dial. It is engaged into the lead screw at, the, at this time. It can be backed away too by loosening this and, and backing it away from the lead screw to minimize wear. Uh, moving closely into it, when we are threading, we move the half nut lever and such that uh, the little index line here lines up with one of the uh, lines on the dial. We'll talk more about that later on when we talk about threading. But that's the purpose of the threading dial. You cannot thread on a lathe without these. Sometimes that's an option on certain lathe. You have to buy it uh, with extra expense. This is a pair of half nuts or split nuts. So when you uh, engage the half nut lever or split nut lever like this, what you're doing is opening and closing this onto the lead screw. These also appeared to be made of Zamac and I had an extra set of these that came with this machine and I suppose not suppose I'm telling you that these do wear out <coughs> uh, and that's why you want to lubricate your lead screw and keep it clean to prevent the chips from getting in there and causing wear but all that's doing is opening and closing on the lead screw so when we talk about split nut or half nut because it's two halves and virtually all lathes employ these but normally there's a separate system or a separate clutch for longitudinal feed now on this particular lathe and on many there's also a keyway right here Can you see the keyway and the, that is what transmits the power often for uh, the clutch rather than the thread itself and in the case of this I believe that it's the uh, keyway here that is transmitting the power for the cross feed uh, mechanism I think I've talked long enough about other things and other features of the lathe here and uh, now it's time to show you how to actually set the gears here in the gear train so right here where the wrench is there's an 11 16 nut and that allows you when loosening it to uh, swing the quadrant back and forth to engage the gears or to uh, to change the gears whatever you're going to do here and in some cases we call this the quadrant rather than the uh, uh, or we call it the banjo rather than the quadrant so you'll see both terms used but I, I, I like to call it the banjo it's just a more romantic name I guess but uh, some people and I believe the parts manual calls it the, uh, the quadrant now I can take the whole quadrant off and put it on the bench to change the gears and that's probably a more suitable way uh, to give this demonstration and discussion and we will not have to do anything with these other gears here at all and uh, there, there's nothing you can do with this gear it's mounted right on the spindle itself and then of course we got these two uh, reversing gears and, and a duplex gear right here and sometimes we use the front part front meeting this way and sometimes we use the back one and that'll be talked about a little later and that's why we got a uh, a duplex gear there but for now the gears that we're going to change are in this uh, part the quadrant so let me take that off and uh, take it to the bench in order to take the quadrant off I have removed two cap screws Sears calls them hollow head screws Take those off, and I've just stuck a, a Phillips screwdriver in here to hold it in line. Now, the, the, the weight of the lead screw will be supported by the carriage. If you don't like that system, you can wrap wire around this and, and support it over the, the bed so that it doesn't fall, because you don't want this to, to have a weight on it. And uh, notice that uh, it's unplugged, and it's a good idea to unplug it and hang the, the cord there, and it's, it's a reminder that the machine is not under power cannot be powered up now but when I take this off I'm going to wiggle it out and see it comes right off and there's a keyway right here and there's a key 
inside here. So it's, it's that simple to get on and off. Now I've had this off before, so it's relatively clean and easy to do and I didn't have to struggle with it. Notice that there's another cast iron guard here and uh, that uh, was not in place, it was not used when we have the quick change gearbox. But there's the entire quadrant. You do not have to do this. I'm just doing it because I think it's easier for me to lay it on the bench and, and do this and uh, <clears throat> explain it. I thought it very interesting to note that uh, even though this lathe was apparently built anywhere between 1946 and uh, early 50s, I'm not sure exactly when, but I think in the 40s, that uh, right away someone had converted it from the standard change gears to the quick change gearbox, but in this box, this metal box, this tin box, along with a bunch of other stuff and um, mouse manure and so on, were all of the original parts just as they had taken them off and in perfect order, along with many, many other things in this box, but uh, that the man had the uh, foresight or the, the care to, to, to take care of these things and preserve them for uh, future owners of which I am one and then eventually there'll be other owners so it's nice when people really take care of things like this I thought you'd be interested in notice knowing that and if you watch that original video that I mentioned a little earlier you'll see me when I uh, actually unpack all of these uh, uh, these things uh, and the excitement of the auction I know I'm jumping around a bit, but uh, I'm back at the lathe now, and this is the compound tumbler gear. And the outer gear here that the pencil is touching is 16 teeth, and the inner one behind this little shield here, which perhaps doesn't even show up too well, is uh, 32 teeth. And you'll need to know that and remember that, and, and uh, this is also a good view of the reversing gear. Another thing that is to be noted that sometimes, uh, depending on the gear setup, that when it's in this position, it might be uh, feeding, if you're uh, th feeding or threading, toward the headstock. Other times, depending on the gears in this position, it may be feeding in the other direction. So always uh, take a little practice run or just turn the spindle by hand to see which way the carriage is advancing depending on the position here. And notice, of course, when it's in neutral that there is uh, nothing touching it. All of the change gears used on the Atlas Craftsman lathe are spur gears. That means that the teeth are straight across. And these are involute gears as opposed to helical gears or some other uh, gear form. And this is the simplest type of gear. I do have another video uh, that you may not have seen on how to cut gears for the Atlas lathe. Also one on how to cut gears for a Logan lathe and really those two videos aren't um, really too much different from one another but yet there are some differences so take a look at that video, video if you get a chance. Now I want to talk about how to engage the gears or how close they should be. We have what we call working depth on a gear, and that's a mathematical distance between the center of one and the center of the other. But naturally, we have no way of measuring that. But the working depth is said to be uh, a, a distance, well, it's a mathematical thing, but there should be a space between here, the bottom of, of uh, the tooth, and the top of the other tooth. If you jam them together like that, they're going to be noisy, they may not even turn right, and there'll be rapid gear wear. So you need some space in there. Not too far out, or there can be damage to the gears, or you can strip the gears. There's not enough engagement. And they don't even turn right at, at that point. But now I'm going to show you how you can gauge them, and there's no other uh, methods of doing this, but for practical purposes, when you're setting up your lathe, the method I'm going to show you will suffice. In the Atlas book, there's a section on uh, how to set the clearance. Now you can pause your video right now if you want to read this.
because I'm just going to move on, but they are addressing exactly what I talked about moments ago. But when you set up the gears, I've got this one loose now, and it's sliding back and forth in the, uh, the banjo, but again, we don't want to cram them together. And the accepted method for doing this is to take some paper, and this is wrapping paper, but you might use, uh, they recommend heavy writing paper or something of that nature, but not cardboard and probably not index stock, which might be just a little bit too thick. But the idea here is to uh, spread the gears apart and engage them. Tighten this down like that and then turn it until the paper comes out and you can see that we've got clearance. So that's the recommended way of doing it. This is the threading chart and this is an exact uh, duplicate of what I showed you on the inside of the gear guard on the lathe. Now if you have a 10 inch lathe or one of the uh, or a 6 inch lathe or one of the other ones there may be some differences so be sure and look at your chart to confirm that what you're doing is correct. But uh, in this chart here now you can see that there's some information above here telling you uh, positions of the stud gears and what they call front and back. Back is toward the headstock, front is away from the headstock. And what an I, an I stands for idler gear, S is for a spacer gear, and uh, X, XS is a steel spacer, and uh, just a little line there is, uh, is a blank. Now these are all uh, threading positions here, all the way down to here, and the lower portion here is feed and revolutions of the spindle. And that's what I'm going to cover uh, later in the video or in a later video. Right now, we're talking about everything above where it says feed that is in regard to uh, strictly threading. And there are five or six pictures here, but they're relatively small and uh, hard to see. But let's uh, talk about them one at a time and then in uh, succeeding pages here of this book. And this is really a good book. And you might find this book also uh, as a craftsman book. It'll be the same book, but it's going to say craftsman instead of atlas. And it was available through the Sears store. But this is the gear train, the very top one in that chart. So it's, it's easier if we look at this chart and then read the information about that particular one. Now I'm not going to do all of these because there are uh, four or five of them. But for instance, the first one here is the gear train for anywhere between four and seven threads per inch. Now that isn't even very common where you're going to be cutting threads that coarse. The second one here is the gear train for anywhere between 8 and 16 threads per inch. That's probably the one you're going to use the most often. And then here is one for the, the uh, reference here is on the other page. This one is for uh, anywhere between 18 through 32 teeth. This one is the gear train for 36 through 64, probably not one you're going to use very often because those are pretty fine. And then finally, this is the gear train for 72 threads per inch. Well, you're never going to use that, I pretty much guarantee it. And then down here, gear train for 80 to 96 threads per inch, that's that. And again, that's not one that you're going to be using. I think Atlas did a wonderful job of putting this book together. Really, this is much more detail than you would get in the South Bend book. But uh, looking at some nomenclature again, this is the quadrant. And again, I like to call it the banjo, and you can see why. But according to the chart now, they are making references to position A, B, C, and D. And A is approximately from the center on out, in other words, the left portion of the slot, because we're going to put two gears in these slots. 
and this is position B. Here's position C, anywhere on here. And again, the, there's slots here because we need to move the gears in and out until they mesh, depending on the diameter of the gear and the number of teeth. And finally, position D. And the bracket adjustment uh, slot here is that bolt or nut that I removed in order to take the whole gear assembly off the lathe, if you remember that, from about 10 minutes ago. So you need to learn those uh, positions.